Good day everyone and welcome back to my channel. We have a mix of official announcements and teases for today's video. Hope you can leave a like and subscribe as it helps out this channel a lot. One of the largest and known Japanese publisher and developer Bandai Namco was targeted by a ransomware attack. The group known as VX Underground monitors malware source code online and they were able to identify that Bandai Namco was hit. The ransomware group responsible for the attack is known as ALPHV or Black Cat. The group has been known to to be increasing their attacks from the past and demanding millions of dollars from the companies. Once the demands aren't met, they will start to release employees' private data. Bandai Namco has not yet responded by confirming nor denying the hack, but VX Underground was able to effectively report ransomware attacks in the past before they were officially posted by the companies, one of which is the NVIDIA cyber attack. Based on the featured photo, no one's sure yet on what type of private information Black Cat decides to leak online. Considering Bandai Namco is a well-known gaming publisher, we may see the ransomware group leaking the games currently in development as well as their release schedule which is similar to what happened to Capcom last 2021 when it got hacked and some of the games got leaked ahead of their scheduled reveal. We can only hope now that none of the employees' private information is revealed as this will be a huge risk of being spread around online. On to our next story, multiple Japanese outlets have recently stated more details about the upcoming Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. The interviewees included Final Fantasy VII series executive producer Yoshinori Kitase and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth creative director Tetsuya Nomura. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth can be enjoyed on its own, hence its name, and the reason the game was delayed as the developer weren't sure whether it would be a two-part or a trilogy. In the development process, the core members of the remake were retained as the project was decided to be released in different parts, so the same team was able to begin work on the sequel and preserving the teamwork know-how as well as the momentum to keep the development up to speed. As the project grew bigger, more resources were needed and right now the teams are in mass production stage with the development going well. Work has started on the story and setting for the third title as well. As fans have a deep appreciation of the original Final Fantasy VII, Square Enix is carefully developing the game as to not ruin the image that fans have and thus the volume of Rebirth is quite massive. When asked if the game will be open world, they simply stated that it will be announced within the next information release. The previous system systems applied in the remake will be carried over and the scene with Cloud and Sephiroth walking together is a Cloud flashback scene. The character's 3D model was not changed however some of them has been adjusted such as Yuffie's model which Square has done for Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate. The central theme of the plot has not changed and new mysteries will be different from the original Final Fantasy VII game. The developers stated that the players of the original will appreciate the sequel in a new way. As the game progresses, fans might wonder if some of the parts are cut and it's due to the fact that the game is being made into a trilogy and thus the structure of the story has changed. As the order of the places you'll visit will be different but rest assured that Square Enix's policy is essentially not to cut anything out. As fans are wondering why the game is exclusive to PS5, the developers have stated it's because of the graphical quality and the power of the SSD's access to speed. With the sequel opening up to a much bigger world after Midgar, loading stress is an extreme bottleneck. That's why developers felt they needed to use the specifications of the PS5 to explore the world without any problems. Moving on to our next topic, Beyond Good and Evil 2 was a surprise reveal way back 2017, igniting fans' anticipation for the sequel. The game featured newly upgraded visuals as well as promising gameplay elements. However, currently the game has been rumored to be in development hell, with some stating that it has been in the works for more than over a decade. Now some fans are patiently waiting for its possible cancellation. With a surprise twist, Ubisoft has mentioned the game in their recent annual Q&A meeting listing Beyond Good and Evil 2 in active development. An early job listing this 2022 might indicate that the game is in final stages of development as Ubisoft is looking for an engine programmer responsible in handling the game's engine with maintenance and fine-tuning. The position is also going to handle the tweaking of existing code for improvements of structure and clarity without changing the overall behavior of the program. Now that Ubisoft has a presentation this September 2022, we may see the game through means of a new game 
gameplay or cinematic trailer. I have high hopes for this game as it shows a lot of interesting mechanics for a sci-fi game and I also love its overall theme and design. For our last story, a few hours ago, PlayStation has formally welcomed Haven Studios into their first-party developer roster. With Bungie soon to come in, it looks like they'll be assisting in Haven's development of their live service game as Sony plans to release 10 live service games by 2026. The acquisition comes in the form of securing distinguished talent. Haven Studios head Jade Raymond has an impressive resume including Assassin's Creed franchise as a producer and executive producer, Watch Dogs 1 as executive producer, forming of EA's Motive Studios, and lastly working with Google Stadia. A detailed interview was conducted by GamesIndustry.biz wherein Jade discussed their plans for development consisting of a team rising to over 100 plus employees by which the company has made key hirings in the positions of engineering with the intent of investing in research and development and cloud development. Haven Studios has also hired talent Jalal El Mansuri who is the technical architect from Ubisoft's live service game Rainbow Six Siege and has also joined Google in a similar role in the past. Now Jalal is the principal architect for the studio as well as the head of research and development. With Haven's work on research and development, they were able to catch the attention of Mark Cerny, the lead system architect for the PS4 and the PS5. Now, Mark Cerny is closely collaborating with the senior engineering team. For now, details for the live service game are still scarce. What's most exciting about the project is how the game is being made as they are thinking forward to new ways to develop the title. And that is it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Do you think that the hackers will leak the upcoming games from Bandai Namco? Is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth going open world? Are you still interested in Beyond Good and Evil 2? Is Haven Studios creating a cloud type of live service game? Let me know about your thoughts on the comment section down below and I will see you all soon.